I'd first uh, read about the dragon's uh, teeth root in Sean's uh, book Classic Tramping. The uh, dragon's teeth shaped from ancient stone. With a name like that, it uh, sparked my curiosity and I added it to my must-do adventures. Over the next few years, I read a few trip reports in wilderness and the great unknown, uh, one of a helicopter rescue on the, uh, on the wireless uh, route. Now, it took us four goes uh, to be able to make this uh, trip happen. Finally, we got a, a weather window and um, we got, uh, got started on a, on a beautiful day. We were planning to get up to uh, Adelaide Tarn on the first day, which meant uh, a pretty long day, but it was a, a beautiful day for swimming. Got to have a swim in, in Boulder Lake to freshen up. After Boulder Lake, we were, uh, had to wade through the, the head high tussock to get up to Green Saddle and uh, from there you know, the range really starts to, to open up and you get your first view of uh, of the dragon's teeth and some of the peaks in the distance. It's it's a uh, you know, quite a rough route to get through uh, to there. Managed to get lost once but found our way back and then Adelaide Tarn you know, as you see in the photos here, it's just beautiful. Tiny little hut, uh, very, very small little bunks, short and narrow. Paul and Marta uh, squeezed in there. I spread out in the tent, and you know, we got to you know, feast on the, the views. The hut's got a great setup with the, the waterfall and pond there, great for getting cleaned up. Next day was was beautiful, nice uh, clear skies, uh, nice and warm. And uh, yeah, we got our first real view of the, the Dragon's Tooth route. And look, this route, uh, for me, it was like solving a puzzle. You know, there were some cans, uh, a few a few can lids, some tied flax, some little red markers. And the route information that we've been able to, to find had a bit of a riddle kind of factor to it. To, to it. There was lots of rereading and you know, regular celebrations when we found a, a clue. And you know, we lost the route following a, a drainage path and had to retrace until we found a, a tiny pink bit of tape above us. These uh, these open uh, sections were, were uh, pretty magic. We found might have found the wireless there, and this is where it got um, you know, even more confusing. The wireless route heads straight up there, but um, our but it looked like there was a footpath going further around, so we went further around, and and there was you know of a scrambly but a, a good way uh, up there. One of the, yeah, I mean, this is a, could provide you a good overview of the, of the road. It's, um, it's pretty, pretty crazy, pretty crazy country. So you, you get round, so this is heading around the first kind of buttress around the, the first dragon's tooth and once you get around uh, this point you kind of get up into what they call the mouth and you know, it's nice sitting up here eating our croissants looking at the, the next stage of the route. I was really surprised to find uh, the high route on my on my watch on my mapping app so yeah, it's something to Something that definitely helped us navigate some of the some of the route here. This uh, next section was was quite a lot of bush bashing. We got a bit scratched up, and then you know, a nice little scrambly section uh, to get up onto the Anatoki uh, Spur, which uh, it, you know it took about five hours, just over five hours, to get through that first section. It's about five kilometers, so it's pretty, pretty slow for long travel. 
And then from there you have this this rocky uh, sidal across the all the way across to the drunken sailors. You see the drunken sailors there dropping down uh, towards Lonely Lake Hut, which is beautiful. This has been recently done up and it has a great skylight and a great new window. The lake is just very nice. Great swimming in the lake. It has this uh, excellent uh, picnic table with great views and a good little camping spot beside the, the hut. So the next day the weather was starting to turn and it was forecast to, to be uh, drizzly and then to rain really heavily later on in the day. So we changed our plans and decided that we'd go through to the, to the hut. The Finella hut and yeah, get some shelter from from the rain that was coming and and get dry from from our morning's uh, walk across uh, to the hut. It was very nice, good fire, nice and relaxing. The next morning we got to go to the the hut swimming hole, which is beautiful, and then from there. We headed up onto the Locket Range to follow the, the ridge line down for the last section of our of our trip. Now this this ridge line is is really uh, was a really one of the highlights of the trip. And uh, yeah, versus going down the, the Cobb Valley, I, I'd recommend it. It's great. Our uh, cairns pretty well marked. Uh, through the through the route and you know the lakes along the the top here just uh, beautiful they make great places to come and camp I see quite a few people do uh, do camp up there this is uh, Iron Hill nice little arrow navigation arrow we're in the clag here so it's useful to be able to know uh, where to drop down here um, we drop down down in between the, the lakes, uh, heading to to, um, to Sylvester Hut. And on our last morning, we uh, were treated to a, a spectacular uh, sunrise. And then we uh, wandered down down the down the hill to the to the Cobb Dam. So definitely a a fantastic adventure. Highly recommend it.